Joining me live on the broadcast to talk more about uh, the Prime Minister's uh, remarks earlier and of course that meeting with uh, President Xi Jinping later is my colleague Ramesh Ramachandran. He's joining us live from Xiamen. Morning uh, Ramesh, uh, thanks for being with us again. Uh, Counter-terrorism and cyber security figuring quite prominently in the Prime Minister's remarks this morning and I suppose it makes sense considering the way terrorism made its way into uh, the declaration uh, from Xiamen just yesterday. Indeed, and good morning to you, Aisha. The, the fact that uh, Prime Minister Modi, in, in, his, in his interventions here at the BRICS summit, has consistently been raising the issue of counter-terrorism and cyber security on the one hand, and the, the usual trade issues, including showcasing India's potential in terms of Make in India, Digital India, Skill India programs, and also the introduction of a uni uniform nationwide goods and services tax. So clearly, Prime Minister Modi is uh, working or hard-selling India on two fronts. One, raising India's uh, and showcase raising India's potential, as it were, and attracting investors and also other companies from other, you know, other BRICS com uh, countries to invest in India. And also, on the other hand, raising and articulating India's concerns on the issue of terrorism in particular. Remember, he's been, he stayed on the message for the better part of the last year, especially since the Pathan Court and Uri attacks, Aisha. Prime Minister Modi has not left any opportunity to raise the issue of counter-terrorism, especially cross-border terrorism emanating from India's immediate neighborhood. Remember, at the G20 summit in China last year, at the East Asia summit on the margins of the UNGA by Minister Swaraj and all uh, other foreign ministers, you know, and, and prime ministers have every opportunity have raised the issue of counter-terrorism. And that uh, message has continued to the BRICS summit here in Shaman. And we saw that manifest itself in the Shaman Declaration yesterday in which for the very first time there was an explicit language a very strong language and formulation used to raise uh, BRICS concerns about counter-terrorism and terrorism per se emanating from Pakistan without of course naming Pakistan the inference was there for all to see especially groups such as Lashkar-e Taiba and Jaish e Mohammed remember Jaish e Mohammed is a UN banned organization yes. but its leader Masood Azhar is still uh, on the loose as it were and India wants the China to come on board to proscribe Masood Azhar as well and many say that the Shaman declaration might be uh, the first tentative step that China may consider taking towards an eventual uh, coming on board, as it were, on the issue of banning Masood Azhar in the UN Security Council. Absolutely. But Ramesh, tell me something. Would it be premature of us to assume that, uh, you know, China has uh, conceded in some ways to India's demands uh, by uh, bringing in, you know, references to Jaish e Mohammed, Dashkare e Toiba? Uh, there it was this entire talk. In fact, even at uh, the press briefing that you attended yesterday, there were questions raised on whether this was all about India in China and Preeti Saran reminding everyone that this is a multilateral forum and therefore it required uh, the coming on board of all parties involved. So how do you expect you know these uh, sort of uh, uh, suggestions and everything uh, uh, making an impact on that all-important bilateral that's going to happen a little while from now between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi? Indeed, that's a very, a very valid question to ask the day, the day after the Shaman Declaration was issued. Remember, Aisha, in the 2016 BRICS summit held in Goa in India, India wanted a similar language, a similar formulation to be reflected in the joint statement known then as the Goa Declaration. But the other four BRICS countries uh, more or less vetoed that proposal and that was the end of it. But this year at the Shaman Summit, we are seeing a more forward-looking language being uh, adopted by consensus. The operative word, Aisha, here is consensus. And that, to my mind, reflects an understanding uh, among all the five BRICS countries, especially India and China, on the issue of uh, calling Pakistan's bluff, to say the least, without naming Pakistan, of course, but referring to groups operating from Pakistan. Pakistani soil, naming specific groups such as Haqqani Network, Lashkar-e Taiba, Jaish e Mohammed, all groups which are operating on the eastern frontier with India and Pakistan's western frontier with Afghanistan. So clearly, it is an improvement from last year's summit, which uh, which was uh, which did not uh, use a similar language in the Goa Declaration. But that said, uh, a lot of questions are being asked here about whether this is a trade-off. 28th August, we saw India China agree to disengage from Doklam. Yes. So many people are here are asking, is this a trade-off? India withdrew troops from Doklam and China in turn agreed to mention 
those groups in the Shaman Declaration. And that question was answered very eloquently by the Secretary East in the Indian Foreign Ministry, Preeti Saran, yesterday, when she said that there is no linkage whatsoever between what happened in Doklam and what happened in the Shaman Declaration yesterday. And she says that uh, this uh, declaration has been adopted by consensus and therefore the only logical explanation is that all five countries, including China, are on board on the issue of counter First step towards China's eventual concession to India on uh, going with India's proposal for a UN ban on Masood Azhar. Absolutely. And perhaps the linkage between those two uh, aspects of conversation might become more apparent, Ramesh, uh, at the bilateral between uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi. We'll uh, uh, ask you to hang on for a second. I'd like to also uh, remind our viewers of uh, the comments that Prime, uh, Pre President Xi made earlier this morning on emerging markets. We're going to ask our uh, business correspondent to help us uh, make sense of some of those comments as well. Let's listen in first. We need to call on the international community to place development high on the agenda of macro policy coordination, better leverage the role of the United Nations, make good use of the high-level political forum on sustainable development, and accelerate the implementation of the sustainable development agenda. We need to urge developed countries to honor their commitments to observe such principles as common but differentiated responsibilities and to increase support to developing countries. We need to call We on Chief Business Correspondent Sumit Chaturvedi with us on the conversation now. Sumit, in so many ways, India and China uh, are uh, very similar emerging markets, emerging economies, uh, global forces to contend with. And uh, that does remind us many times of the sort of competition that exists between uh, the two Asian giants. Make sense of those comments by uh, uh, President Xi and, of course, Prime Minister Modi on the importance of uh, the digital world and emerging markets today. Aisha, if you see overall in global scenario, on one side India and China are strict competitors, but on the other side, if you look at the Western influence, especially with regards to uh, technology and taking leap in technology, where the US is far, far ahead of uh, all Asian and EU nations put together, China and India will have to come together going forward. Another reason for this is that uh, uh, both China and India share a lot of geographical and political, uh, there are similarities between both countries. That's perhaps why uh, Chinese president said that development for all is the mantra at this moment. He also said that he wants a solidarity among emerging markets. Right. But when BRICS is clearly uh, uh, has been formed as a balance uh, to Western economies and influence, they have to come together. And that's what the message was given by Chinese premier. All right, we leave it at that. Uh, Sumit Chaturvedi, thanks very much for joining us on the broadcast. Also, my colleague Ramesh Ramachandran for joining in from Shaman.